Mark Steele has a type. I'm not referring to a, a romantic type, the, the sort of person that he might be sexually attracted to. I'm actually talking about the kind of person that uh, he might seek to dominate, the, the kind of person that Mark Steele is most able and effective at bending to his will. Perhaps the most famous example of that person is Modern Day Jester, otherwise known as Steen Motley. And you might remember the episodes I did about him a few months ago. He was the, the chap who tried to arrest the CEO of St Albans Council. And maybe you remember exactly how badly that went for him. The type that I'm thinking of tends to be hard right, both a combination of hard right political views and hard right on the ADHD spectrum. Uh, that does seem to be a, a kind of person that finds Mark Steele's message particularly attractive. And Mark Steele has become very good at identifying those sorts of people, so much so that when he finds one of those people, he's prepared to do anything, because he knows that that sort of person will in turn be willing to do almost anything for him. Uh, and that's why, a few months ago, Mark Steele found himself travelling outside of his normal stomping ground of Gateshead in the northeast of England and took a trip to London. Well, there was a lot upset. Uh, a lot of the uh, embedded state actors quite upset about me going down the London Street, the lads, because quite a few of them been getting themselves in a bit of trouble. And Mark Steele travelled to London specifically to meet the person holding the camera and whose voice you can hear in the next clip. This guy is Matt Houston, otherwise known as Matt Hardy, and he's one of the most prolific vandals, uh, somebody who has made a sort of career out of destroying Transport for London property, ULES cameras, traffic lights. If it's anything to do with road safety uh, and Matt doesn't like it, he feels somewhat entitled to tear it down. And in this scene, he's talking to a lady whose first name is Katie, who apparently is a journalist who works for the Times newspaper. I told them they're, they're weapons, not cameras. Right. And we're defending ourselves from them. Mm. That's what it's all about. You're not going to write that in your newspaper. I know you're not. You won't be allowed. I won't be allowed. To. You won't be allowed to write that in your newspaper. Weapons, not cameras. Where, where have we heard that before? Uh, oh yeah, it's, it's basically Mark Steele's imaginative fiction, but spoken through another person's mouth. It's obvious, just from hearing Matt Houston talk, that he has been listening to Mark Steele. They're close associates, they're friends. Mark Steele regularly talks about Matt Houston, and Matt Houston and his fans absolutely love Mark Steele. Uh, and just listen to the way that Matt is regurgitating Mark Steele's utter nonsense. Can I, can I say something? I've been very close to these cameras, right? And yeah. they are weapons grade, right? They can get all the registrations and stuff they need off these little white TFL cameras on the lights everywhere. Little small units like this big, and they get everything they need off these, yeah? These things are weapons grade. I've seen a video of one getting slapped with a sledgehammer 20 times, and it doesn't even dent it. They're weapons grade. It's almost certain that Matt Houston has seen such a video, but what he's neglecting to tell this journalist from the Times is that he was the star of the video. He was the person who was bashing the ULES camera with the sledgehammer. Uh, and also, did you notice in the background, who's this familiar face? Well, it's none other than Steen Motley, modern day jester. And uh, he looks like he's a bit upset. Maybe he's realising that Mark Steele has a new pet he's been replaced. The thing about Matt Houston is that he's prepared to do things that modern day Jester is just too afraid to do. Uh, for example, Matt Houston makes videos of his acts of destruction, like this time when he stole a ULES camera and then took it apart, uh, just to show off exactly how ignorant he is of electronics. Capacitors. What are capacitors doing inside an FDR camera? Yeah, where's your cameras? Weapons these are, folks. Weapons, not cameras. Why capacitors? Why do capacitors need to be doing inside an NPR camera? Yeah, yeah. Matt Houston believes that the presence of capacitors in a device means that it must be a weapon. It's a, a conspiracy theory he states very confidently in his drunken way. Where would he have got this notion from? Who could have 
fed him this preposterously stupid idea that one of the most fundamental building blocks of all electronic devices it can only exist in energy weapons, directed energy weapons. What conspiracy theory nutter would have developed that idea and then fed it to a gullible ADHD hard right nitwit like Matt Houston? You've got a bank of capacity 17.2 watts potential. 4.2 watts, that can kill you. Be known to kill humans. Directional weapon system. I'm sure every single one of you guessed who the the puppeteer pulling Matt Houston's strings was. Of course it was Mark Steele. Mark Steele is the, the fountainhead of all of Matt Houston's ridiculous ideas. All the stupid things that Matt Houston says, well, they have come from Mark Steele because Mark Steele is Matt Houston's idol. Uh, do you remember how a few months ago I, I made some shows about Mark Steele giving ridiculous legal advice. Well, do, do you think Mark Steele might have been responsible for suggesting this crock of nonsense to Matt Houston? Folks, so yeah, we'll just say it a bit <laughs> louder, chop a few more down, see what goes on. Um, you're legally allowed to chop them down because they're a weapon system. They can cause you harm. You're scared of it. Um, cause you your harm, your property harm. Go and cut them down, folks. You're free to <laughs> do it. I'm sure you've already guessed who has fed Matt Houston, this utterly ridiculous and quite plainly wrong legal theory. The notion that if you are afraid of something and you believe that it is a directed energy weapon, that you are free to destroy it. You, it Matt Houston believes that he is entirely justified in destroying it. Well, of course, he got that idea from Mark Steele as well. Mark Steele is the person who fed that ridiculous conspiracy theory to Matt Houston. And only somebody as stupid and gullible as Matt Houston would actually act upon it. If you think a piece of equipment is extremely dangerous and poses a significant danger to you, guess what? It's a defense, right, to a criminal damage charge. Okay, now that's quite interesting, isn't it? I mean, obviously we've got self-defense. This is a defence, just not a very good one. It's the kind of defence so ludicrous that it might get you laughed out of court and straight into a holding cell and from there transported to a prison where you might be expected to spend a good few years reflecting on, on how you got there. If, of course, Matt Houston is capable of any kind of reflection. Because all this is happening while Matt Houston is on remand. That's right, he has been arrested and charged with a series of crimes, destroying public property, carrying implements with the intent to destroy public property, harassing police officers and ambulance workers, sometimes using forms of racial abuse. That's the kind of person that Matt Houston is. That's the sort of person that Mark Steele chooses to associate and, and use as tools of his product. And as he's on remand, well, he has been fitted with a GPS ankle monitor. And you'd think that might allow the authorities to keep a track on him, uh, to prevent him from committing further crimes. Well, Matt Houston has a few words for that. I've, I cut my tag off. I cut my <coughs> tag off my leg. I'm walking free. Why is that? Why don't they come and <coughs> remind me? I'll tell you for why. Because if they remind me, I get to present evidence before a judge in chambers. We get to show them what the ULES is. Yeah, a weapon system. Weapon system. Rupert thinks that's funny. You can fuck off then, you little prick. I cut my tag off my leg and I've not been remanded because we can prove it's a laser weapon system. If they put me in remand, it'll be within seven days. We get to present that evidence. I walk free that day and then we get to come out and we get to take every single one of these down. This is the confidence that is born of true idiocy. Matt Houston will, of course, have his day in court. It's impossible for him to continue behaving like this and not find himself in trouble. But unfortunately for us, that day will come in summer of 2026. So we've got uh, plenty of long months to wait until his spate of vandalism ends. And in the meantime, Matt Houston and the Blade Runners, that's the, uh, 
that the semi-organized crime group of which he is a, a leading member, and they go around destroying ULES cameras, TFL equipment, and, uh, and other items of public safety infrastructure, and then bragging about it on TikTok and other video streams. Well, they have formed a sort of symbiotic relationship with Mark Steele. It's almost like a, a feedback system of idiocy, where they both reinforce each other's bad behaviour. I think we definitely know what that is. Thanks to uh, the uh, Blade Runners, nobody would have ever thought for one minute uh, that someone would have, uh, you know, worked out what this uh, this laser, this fears to rear laser element uh, is. This is not a phased array, and those are not lasers. Uh, the concept of a laser phased array, as far as I'm aware, doesn't exist outside of Mark Steele's zany imagination. It's the, a, a crazy combination of words that Mark Steele has juxtaposed with this image in the hope of making people equally as cretinized as Matt Houston believe him, to, to drive them into some kind of panic and, and to perpetuate their criminal frenzy. This is obviously the ramblings of an ignoramus. But you don't really need to be that clever to trigger somebody like Matt Houston, who is so primed to commit acts of vandalism that this provides the justification and the pretext. It's exactly what Matt Houston wants to hear. But you know what? This is by no means one of the most ludicrous and zany conspiracy theories that Mark Steele has claimed about London's ULES cameras. So you set, you have your kill zone, you jump in your vehicle and try and escape this horror, this 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 abomination. And what actually happens, you drive into that cam that what they call a camera, which is basically a radar gun. It sees your vehicle, stops your vehicle dead, switches it off, then obviously the zombies then come, knock all your windows out, drag it out, and probably bite you to death. I would happily trade improved air quality in central London for the occasional outbreak of zombies. As far as I'm aware, though, that has never happened. So if you're thinking of coming to London, maybe as a tourist or, or visiting for business, well, you're absolutely welcome to come here. And the thing you should know is that your chances of being bitten to death by a zombie are exceedingly low, possibly as low as any country you might ever choose to visit, even those that do not have ULES cameras. Now, while Mark Steele is clearly having difficulty separating fact from his overwrought imagination, have a listen to this final clip from Matt Houston, because when you allow him to speak enough, and, and he never stops talking, sometimes he lets certain truths slip out. And in this clip, Matt is talking about his motivations, why it is that he is really destroying ULED's cameras. Everything's free. If you know how to go out and take it, everything's free. I've had more free stuff this year than I've had in my whole fucking life. I tell you, but it's not free though. It's not free. You've got to do something for it. You've got to put yourself out there. You know what I mean? You've got to put yourself out there and do something. I wish I ain't going to get noticed. So I, you think that you're going to get on just over broke in a job and you're going to, ever going to be doing anything except that job. That's, I used to watch Andrew Tate. Started last year, I was watching Andrew Tate. He was like, quit your fucking job, do all this shit. I was like, yeah, fuck it. I'll tell you, the geese was an inspiration for me. I'm tired of fucking do it. I probably wouldn't have quit my job if it weren't for Andrew Tate. So after that little outburst, we can all ask ourselves if Matt Hardy is sincere in his beliefs that the ULES cameras are in fact directed energy weapons, lasers sent to kill us all? Or is this whole nonsense, this whole prattle that, that he provides as a, a pretext, a justification for the violence that he wants to commit, is it all just an attention-seeking grift? Is it all his way of, of getting attention from idiots in the public who maybe dislike the ULES camera system, he has found himself a way of garnering the attention he craves in order to get donations. He, he's made himself more wealthy than he would have been had he worked a normal job. 
is this whole thing an Andrew Tate style grift? Well, of course you've guessed, my theory is that it is. And, and it's also precisely that for Mark Steele, because Mark Steele is, is just as much a buffoon as Matt Houston. He's the man who, despite having no background, zero expertise in any of these subjects, he one day decided that he was an expert. He, he is the man who, despite any knowledge or training in electronics, purports to be able to identify these components and claims that uh, a, a signal of four watts can kill a person. And that is why Mark Steele has always been the perennial favourite of this channel. Anyway, that's all from me this week. Please come back in a week's time when I promise you even more brain-dead lunacy from these kinds of absolutely awful people. So I'll see you soon.